morning guys. Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com and TrierWildernessAcademy.com. Hope you guys are doing good this morning. I'm going to just wait a few minutes. I'm actually early. I know. It's probably going to snow in July. <laughs> um, I'm, I am a day late though, but there's reason for that. So I'll wait a little bit here, see if we can get a couple people to jump on and we'll chit chat some today. I hope you all enjoyed your Independence Day. It was a gorgeous day here. Uh, very warm. It started to get warm. We have had such amazing weather um, these last couple weeks. It has been really cool in the morning, so jeans and a sweatshirt were necessary to do our walks. And it was just such refreshing temperatures, so it was just awesome getting out and walking. And then yesterday, the heat started to come in. Today, it's supposed to be in the high 90s, so it went from 46 degrees to high 90s. We've just been experiencing such weird weather. And I know there's been weird weather uh, across the country, so I'm sure many of you have been experiencing some weird stuff, too. But the local people were saying yesterday at uh, my yard sale that they were constantly having to keep their gardens covered because of the frost and the freezing that was going on here. So, pretty crazy. So, I'll wait a little bit yet here. I can see some of you starting to jump on, so I'm excited to chit-chat with you today. This has become a real highlight in my week. I really enjoy the break and getting to chat with you guys and getting to know you all. Um, it's so much more fun than talking to a blank screen. So uh, hopefully we can get some stuff going on here. Uh, see a bunch of you on. Who's joining me today? Uh, seems like there's a lag so I can see you joining me but I can't see who it is. So join in, sh talk to me, where are you guys from? And uh, what did you do for your 4th of July celebrations? Hello, Teresa. Good to see you joining me this morning. The mountain boy and I spent the day at a yard sale yesterday. We loaded up our 24-foot gooseneck trailer, and it, was, it wasn't completely loaded, but it was loaded down, and the back of my rig was loaded down, and... We set up our yard sale up on uh, a local highway. There's a horse arena there and plenty of parking and lots of traffic. Um, we're kind of in a uh, in-between spot between towns, so we caught a lot of traffic and got rid of a lot of our junk. <laughs> Actually, a lot of it was treasures. I have to confess that um, that was a 30-year accumulation of stuff. When I was 18, I got my first apartment and have been on my own ever since. And I was, it has been a real treat going through things. Um, and just seeing all the things that are 30 years old and still in good shape, mind you. But it was time to pass them on. So uh, all of my treasures, I was really excited because a lot of my treasure treasures went to really good friends of mine. Um, so that excited me to know that I was um, passing them along and uh, it is just so incredibly freeing when you can get rid of stuff. Anybody else out there getting rid of stuff and have you gone through things and downsized and simplified and decluttered? Such a great, great feeling. Uh, such a freedom to get just rid of baggage and honestly when you have stuff for that long it's just... It's kind of like that's what it is. It's baggage and it just kind of lifts some weights off of you, uh, removes your past from your present. Um, I don't know. But it was it was a good feeling. We And we had a very successful day. And I was very grateful to have the Mountain Boys help. Uh, the Mountain Man and Mountain Ben were working on our backhoe yesterday, trying to get that up and going. Um, we have success. It is back together. Uh, just need to get some more hydraulic fluid and hopefully she will be up and running. So that was a blessing also. So lots was getting done yesterday. It was not a holiday for us exactly. It was a work day. Um, but we do need to really concentrate on our independence and our freedoms. And we need to hang on to those things and, and uh, make sure that we're not losing them because as the years progress we are losing many of our freedoms and um, I hope that you all keep your voice and stand firm for the freedoms that we need to keep. So 
Today's topic is, and so appropriate, does preparedness encourage hoarding? Interesting thought being that we have been like digging through a 12 by 12 shed and the day before yesterday I was going through the house pulling things off the walls, um, emptying bookshelves, going through things, sorting things, getting furniture ready to go uh, for our yard sale and um, like I said it's a freeing process. But I really do believe in some ways that preparedness can encourage hoarding and you don't want to hoard things. Um, being prepared doesn't mean that you need to look like, I'm aging myself, but Sanford and Son or, um, you know, the, the local junkyard. Uh, granted, the mountain man does tend to uh, find treasures in junk, but he turns junk into treasures. So uh, with his blacksmithing and his um, fabricating of things, we he has turned some you know, pieces of junk into some amazing useful tools. He was just working and on and made a really awesome wood trailer for us, which he did do a video on, and you'll be seeing shortly. Um, but at the same time, like in our homes, there's, there's a difference between, in my opinion, prepping and a lifestyle of preparedness. Prepping is where you are just hoarding, stockpiling, stashing stuff away, and oftentimes on a whim, maybe on a regular basis, where I feel a lifestyle of preparedness is stocking up on things, but also having the skills to back up um, the need there. So as an example, preserving food. You know, um, in prepping, you may just stockpile a lot of uh, freeze-dried uh lots of food in in food safe containers and long-term containers um, where for me I do do some of that but the majority of my preserving uh, comes from local foods what's in my garden and I preserve a lot of it whether it's dehydrated or whether it is canned uh, we preserve our meats canning um, salt curing so having those skills to back that up um, eliminates the need to keep bringing in because that's done, you know, once a year, um, usually from, let's say, June to S September, October. In that range of time, you know, we're preserving and putting up food. I keep my jars. I have my jars. So my jars are kind of hoarded, but they are quite necessary. And um, they may be empty some of the year, but they are filled most of the year. So I do think it can, at, at certain levels, preparedness can cause you to hoard things. And I want to discourage hoarding. Um... One of the things that I've always found with uh, sorting through things for moves and different things was that if I didn't use it for the last three years, I really don't need it. Now, I do, uh, I am careful with that because there are things that I have, such as my grandfather's uh, treadle leather sewing machine that I haven't used in three years, but it will get used. So that's something that I certainly won't part with. But junky stuff, decorations, uh, just stuff that you have sitting around that you think you're going to use, but you haven't used it for three years, maybe even eight, ten years, you don't need it. So being able to get rid of that stuff and simplify and focus on strictly keeping the things that you need, I think is extremely important because... People don't realize how much junk and clutter and things weigh on you until you start sorting through it and getting rid of it. And I know that, and I knew that these things were weighting me down. Um, so it is just such a, a healthy thing to go through this process. It's also healthy to eliminate getting in that mindset of thinking you need to have everything. Um, really when it comes down to preparedness, um, you need your basic necessities, but you don't need all the latest and greatest 
of things and tons of them. You know, our rule is to have three backups of our most important tools so that, um, you know, we always have a working tool on hand. And beyond that, you don't need to have hordes and hordes of things. So it is, it is, there's a fine line. And, and I encourage you, if you've got mounds of things and you know you need to simplify and you know you need to um, stop collecting things, I highly encourage you to embark on that journey. And what I suggest is that you um, make a list of how you're going to attack that. Many of us have many rooms. We have different storage areas. Some of you have attics and, and different things. I encourage you to go room to room. It is the easiest way to do things and um, it makes it so much nicer and so much easier and so much less overwhelming. And I will admit, this process has its days where it is extremely overwhelming. Um, two days ago, when I was going through things, I had already posted that I was going to have the yard sale from 8 to 4 yesterday, so I was now fully committed. And I have a lot of work that I need to get done, writing, and um, I'm working on a book, and I have web work to do. So every time I'm doing something else, it's pulling me away from my responsibilities. So it was starting to weigh on me and was overwhelming. And uh, I just wanted to mention, there was this was kind of like a twofold um, thing today, F focusing on simplifying and not hoarding. And also realizing that there's a lot of growth that takes place when you're walking through valleys or, or hard times or even your day-to-day. -day. Um, if you're willing to keep your eyes open, um, there's a lot of opportunities for us to grow, mature, both uh, mentally, uh, physically, and spiritually. And... This is definitely one of those periods where there is a lot of growth and because our eyes are so wide open and things are kind of raw, um, we're seeing so many amazing things transpiring in front of us. Um, last week, the enemy was attacking full force. It was just crazy. I mean, it was just one tremendous thing after the other and they weren't little they weren't they 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 weren't things you could very easily blow off but it got to the point where they we are in in a place where those things aren't so strongly affecting us um in a negative way they're more empowering us to keep moving forward because it's just so crazy you can't make this stuff up as we're going through this process and What's really awesome, too, is that, you know, as soon as the enemy's attacking us, we can see God counterattacking, and there's so many blessings, and I want to encourage you guys, and I have a funny question for you. How many of you that are out there watching would like to journal, and you own a whole bunch of journals, but you never get a chance to write in them or keep them going? You start, and you don't ever keep them going? That tends to be me. And I know why. The, the problem is I have too many journals and I just, I'm cluttered in my mind and I'm not focusing. Where it's really nice when you just have one thing. I now have one. I sold all my journals yesterday. All my blank journals that I didn't need and don't have. And I want to, I really want to keep journaling. The journals that I find, um are so fun to go back through and read over what was going over at the time and and just uh, seeing my my growth my progression in life and seeing those that inspired me on my journey and the things that I was grateful for at the time and that is part of the journey that we're on and I think it should be for everybody regardless what you're going through good bad in between is to keep a daily record, even if you only write a short paragraph or one word. Um, there's a woman, and I can't think of her name, she has a 365-day journal where you write just one word. Good morning, Tammy. And, and the purpose of that is just to write one word of something that you're grateful for that day. And even going back through something like that, it will definitely trigger thoughts and, and cause you to recollect the moments and the things and the happenings. So I want to really encourage you um, to 
journal and and keep your eyes on the positive because it makes life so much better you know through this process it's really grueling it's really ugly and it's really raw but at the same time you know we've had so many f very very few bad days and thankfully the mountain man and I are like this instead of both being down at the same time so when one's down the other's up and we're able to keep each other you know help pull each other out of the muck and the mire when it happens uh, we're we're human you know I might be as positive as anybody out there but I'm I'm human and I still have those days where it's just harder you know and that's just the way it is but I encourage you to get yourself a journal one journal if you've got many just get one get rid of the rest and focus and write something every day even if it's just a paragraph on what you're grateful for um, the things that are happening in your life because one of the things that was really interesting for me um, oh and I gotta find something for you I'm gonna go grab something and and you're gonna see my house it looks like a bomb has gone off there are boxes and stuff just dogs they don't even know where to go there's just stuff everywhere but I wanna I wanna show you a little funny that I found but one of the things that I did find was my um, writing journal from 10th grade and what's unique about that is my writing teacher or my English teacher in 10th grade was one of the people who inspired me to write and she has been in my mind as an adult and progressing on and is the one that's in the back just nudging me to keep writing and um, some of the things I wrote in that journal that year were really interesting and very unique and um, are part of what made me who I am today. So it's pretty cool when you have, you know, your memorabilia, the important things that you want to hang on to, not necessarily junk and you don't need to have a lot of them. And um, another tip for you guys is um, when you have things that you want to remember but you don't want to keep all the clutter, we have this amazing thing called technology and photos and I'm sure many of you have tons of them. That's what I do is I take a picture of things and add it to my archives for the year um, so that I can look back and see those things and, and recall them without keeping it, you know, physically on on the property you know so just a just a thought for you this is a funny speaking of which I found one of my the lighting's really bright here again as always today but one of my um, porcelain pieces or uh, pottery pieces that I wanted to keep and inside it this is really funny I don't know if you can see this there we go okay that is an orange. Now listen, that is an orange. It is a petrified orange that was in my uh, piece of pottery. The mountain man uh, came home one day from work on the farm and carved that out and you know pulled the, the skin off of the orange and set it on the counter for me and it stayed in that pottery piece and ended up getting packaged and moving to Idaho. So that's obviously something I don't need to have and I will take a photo of but it was just funny and I thought I would share it with you many of you know I find hearts everywhere I find hearts in mud puddles I find hearts in the clouds I find hearts on tree bark and as we're hiking at a good clip I'll find a heart the tip of my pinky the size of the tip of my pinky so that's my sign from God that all is good but it is it is neat to look back on our journals it's healthy to look back on our journals and it's also really really healthy to see the good in our lives and 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 be focused on the gratitude now as I mentioned um, growing during the storm is really important and I read this last week but I wanted to touch on it again just because it's really important and I think that in a day-to-day setting this is something that can be really powerful and a really good reminder uh, we are trained by our troubles a tree that's planted in a rainforest is not forced to extend its roots downward in search of water therefore it remains poorly anchored and can be toppled by even a moderate wind by contrast though the mesquite tree that's planted in a dry desert is threatened by its hostile environment how does it survive 
by driving its roots down 30 feet or more into the earth, seeking for water. By adapting and adjusting to harsh conditions, the well-rooted tree becomes strong and steady against all assailants. So I think that that is just something that we need to focus on on a daily basis is just our survival tactics for ourselves personally and always focusing on a level of preparedness um, and not hoarding. That's so important, guys. It is, uh, I'm telling you, we've got 30 years of baggage because of me um, being out on my own at 18 and then the mountain man was traveling, um, you know, rodeoing and in different states so he's accumulated a lot of stuff so it's nice when you get rid of all the things that you just don't need and only keep only and solely what you need and will use so it's very powerful but one of the things too I talk a lot about faith and you guys all know that our faith is so extremely strong and right now I hope that it's really shining through um, because we are fully trusting God for an outcome that, and, and through a walk that there are so many unknowns, we have no idea what's going to transpire this year and, and where we will be at, both physically living and, and mentally and spiritually. But through this journey of eight years here, we can see how God has really helped us grow in our spiritual walk uh, through my surgery and just being being here. Um, his beauties surround us every day. And having that faith walk is so important all the time. Focusing on the things that we're blessed with all the time. But one of the other things that we tend to overlook and not really consider is that our job on this earth is to just have extremely strong faith and and a belief that the outcome no matter what we're going through will be good and will be um, in our best interest because sometimes you know our our wishes and our desires aren't fulfilled and some people get disturbed and um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for discouraged when the things they're looking for uh, don't appear and don't occur um, as though God isn't present in their life. But the thing is, when those things don't occur, there's purpose in that. And as I mentioned, when you look back and you read through your journal and you, you look back in the past in a positive way, sometimes you'll see the path and realize that those things you were asking for and looking for really weren't in your best interests. And the outcome was really pretty amazing. So one of the things that is in Second Chronicles, I believe it's 2015, is um, part of the verse says, This is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged by this mighty army, for the battle is not yours but God's. And this is where um, they're going to battle, and it's, it's not looking good. Hi, Zach. And when you're going through the thick of things, you know, you don't, you don't think about that. You, you, we always try to do things on our own. We always try to um, keep digging our hands back into things that we relinquish. And the thing is that we are called to just be extremely faithful and, and, and believe and, and that God will fight the battles for us. And... As we are going through this battle, we are truly seeing that firsthand because, like I said, the enemy is attacking and God keeps countering. We are going to be under attack because we are showing our extreme faith and we're not just doing it quietly. We're sharing our walk with you. And there's going to be a lot of struggles on the way. So, you know, that's to be expected. And, uh, you know, learning to roll with it, learning to focus. <laughs> so funny, speaking of the devil, right? As my screen starts spinning and I'm no longer there. <laughs> Good morning, Holly. So I just want to encourage you, really, really focus on the positive in your life. You're going to have bad days. You're going to go through really, really rough things. The You know, that's just a, a given. But the more you focus on the positive and the more you can, you know, 
even look back on the positive. You know, when you're having a rough day, to be able to look back in a journal that talks about the things you're grateful for, even though you're going through a rough spot, is, is pretty powerful. And it's also, like I said, really powerful when your younger self um, is encouraging you. Something else that was really neat that I did um, or I had happen is when I was going through our shed, I was going through our filing cabinets. And there was a point in my life where I was a single mom and it was a very unexpected thing. Um, the rug was ripped out from under me uh, due to an affair. And um, it was it was a really rough time. And I was really pulling into God then also. And I was focusing a lot on the positive And I had a lot of positive quotes written. And it was really funny because when I found those in the filing cabinet, my younger self was like empowering my present self. So... It was really pretty neat, and, and it's the same thing occurs when you're doing your journaling. And we follow the boss of the swamp on uh, YouTube, and really unique guy. If you haven't found him or, or watched his stuff, he's really neat to watch. He's very informative, too. He does a lot of off-grid things as well, and building and um, inspirational things. But uh, he goes through his journals from time to time, too, and it's just really neat to hear him share his stories. Uh, and... You know, we try to remember everything, and we think we're going to remember everything, but often we forget. So when you have those reminders, it's really fun. Good morning, Cindy. So I really want to encourage you guys to do that. And if you, like I said earlier, if you get overwhelmed, it's most likely because you have a million journals sitting there, and you don't know which pretty one to write in, or you just don't take the time. So get rid of all the extra journals, claim one, and write in it. And try to be religious and do it every day, either in the morning or in the evening. I mean, I, I like to do mine in the evening after my day and when I'm revamping for my next day. So keep that in mind. There's a couple other things I wanted to share with you. Um, we are sharing the behind the scenes of our construction inside of our existing home here as we finish the walls. You can see we still have Tyvek and, and the framing in place. So as we start working on this, we are going to be sharing that on Patreon as well as on YouTube. Um, you can find Patreon by going to patreon.com slash Wilderness and it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com. The links are down below in the description. Also, as I was mentioning with the hoarding, that it's nice when you have the skills to back things up because when you have the skills, you don't need to hoard as much because you have the skills to produce the things you need. So if you're interested in learning those skills, we educate on that at treyerwildernessacademy.com. And uh, the link below is treyerwildernessacademy.com slash S-K-O-T-M, skill of the month. Um, so check that out also. We would love to have you join us. And um, we're looking for people to help us push our homestead and help us sell our homestead. Uh, we are offering a $1,000 finder's fee if you send somebody our way. So please help us share that by going to treyerwilderness.com slash five, the number five acres. The link's down below also, but you can cut and paste that and share it with your friends. Um, we really need to have this sold by the end of August, if not sooner. Uh, two other links is the Oh So Good Bones. Uh, I've, I do a lot of bone broth. It's very nourishing. It's very um, cleansing for your gut. Rebuilds your good gut flora. And um, for me, I have a real struggle with eating. So um, it's good to give my body a break also from time to time with all the detoxing. So when you're just doing a liquid diet, your organs aren't having to work as hard. So it's really overall a great way to uh, detox and give your body a break. And you can find them by going to treyerwilderness.com slash bone broth. And we also were given a... Um, Butcher Box to review. I have a video coming out shortly on that. Um, it is non-GMO um, grass-fed meats with no antibiotics, no hormones, and um, was really excited to find that because it's really hard to find good meats here. I mean, we've, I shouldn't say that, right outside my door are many good meats and that's what we live off of every year, but it's nice to have a mix of pork and chicken 
and other things into our diet. So they are also doing um, bacon in the boxes. And if you're interested in checking them out and you were to sign up now to get a butcher box delivered to your home, you get free bacon for life, which is awesome. I I know there are people out there, it surprised me to death to find that there are people out there that don't like bacon. I just don't know how that's possible. I could eat bacon for every meal. Um, it's just a me. That's <laughs> my favorite. Um, so you can find that by going to tryyourwilderness.com slash butcherbox. And the link is below. Need to learn about making broth. I'm not able to get clean food in my area. Yeah, it's really hard. And Cindy, that's my struggle too. Um, you know, besides our elk and deer bones, um, locally within an hour to two hour radius, it's hard for me to find bones that are of grass-fed bone uh, animals. So even just finding the bones is very hard. So once I run out of what I produce um, during our hunting season, um, I'm, I'm kind of scrambling. There is a place about an hour and a half from me that has bones occasionally, but then I, I don't have a lot of freezer space either. Uh, I have a propane freezer, so it's not as big uh, cubic size in the inside. So I can only stock up so much. So it is hard to find that. That's why I turn to Oh So Good Bone Broth um, in when I'm out. Uh, it's it's seven dollars. I believe it's seven ninety nine a bag, and uh, that gives me a meal to two meals. I always blend in an avocado and a lot of seasonings: turmeric, cayenne, um, basil, and cilantro. So. They're really amazing, and it's very, very good broth. But making your own broth is very easy. I have a video and a blog post coming out on that. Um, it's very, very easy to do, and then you just pressure can it and put it on your shelf. So I will definitely um, take um, add that link as soon as that is out so that you can reference that, Cindy. But it is hard to find. It's hard to find good bones because you have to figure what the animals are eating is also in their meat, in their bones, and it's you know polluted so it is hard to find the best thing to do is grow your own and uh, know where your meats are coming from and from the wild too especially here where we are you know it's it's untainted meats and and we don't have to pay to feed them so you know that's that's how we focus but um, I encourage you to check out the butcher box. That is a special bonus for our audience to be able to get the bacon for life. And the meats are very, very good, very tasty. Was very impressed by them. Um, and like I said, I have a video coming out on that too. But guys, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join me today. And I just want to encourage you to focus on the good. We all have ups and downs. Um, we all have things that we're going to go through if we're not now. You know, there's there's always more ahead. You know, you never know what the next day is going to bring. And, you know, being prepared is not just um, with food and water. It's also mentally at times too. So when you when you learn these skills and learn how to cope, there we go. It was spitting again. Sorry about that, guys. But when you learn how to um, have preparedness techniques in place for your mental health as well, and you are aware of what you can do to make you know the rough walks easier. It's it's so much better. My eyes are on him. Um, my family's eyes are on him. We've just been so blessed. See his hand, and it's just amazing. So I encourage you to strengthen your faith walk because it's really an amazing place when you are going through such situations. So I'm just going to say a quick prayer for you guys. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for these people that have joined me today. Just bless them. Bless their walk. And just strengthen them if they're going through journeys and are in need of healing. Lord, just put your hand, loving hand on them and just continue to bless them in their uh, preparedness efforts and, and just strengthen them for their walk. And Lord, I just thank you for all you're going to do and ask this in Jesus' name. Guys, again, thank you so much for joining me. Um, next week we will have some more educational things. Um, I'm going to keep bringing in educational things into these uh, Facebook Lives, but also sharing our walk and our journey with you guys. And again, check out Patreon. The guys are going to start milling lumber. We've been felling trees all over the place out here on our property um, because that's what we're going to use to finish our home and build. So um, you'll get to see all that in action. So guys, I look really forward to seeing you next Wednesday.